today on Channel One. Do you talk on the phone or text while you drive? Find out how distracted drivers could be making the roads less safe. We take to the air with teenage pilots for an incredible ride. And we'll show you why there's pandemonium in China. Hi everyone, I'm Mika Nichols. It's Friday, welcome to Channel One. Before you go out this weekend and get behind the wheel and ride with friends, there's a new study which might change how much you do while you're driving. Eileen Wu has this report. What do you do behind the wheel? I try to like go faster when I'm in a rush. I've seen people putting on makeup. A lot of times I drive with one of my friends and uh, she, she'll be sitting there text messaging. Does this sound like you? Maybe one of your friends? A survey released this week polled some 5,600 driving age students. Teens say while they've gotten the message that alcohol and driving don't mix, there's still a tendency to multitask while behind the wheel. The message that's out there the teens have gotten is that drinking and driving is a problem. But it's so much more than that. Distractions are huge. Huge indeed, because according to the survey, 90% report friends distracting drivers and 89% say their friends use cell phones while they drive. 79% of teens say they've seen friends dancing or singing. Those distractions you just blew your tire. Uh, can turn deadly in an instant, as it did for Greg and Stephen Ahrens. Stephen's twin brother Greg, just 17 years old, was in the driver's seat when he spun out of control at 70 miles an hour and hit a pole, severely injuring Stephen and killing Greg. He had the world by the tail. You know, and all that changed in an instant. Traffic accidents are the number one killer of U.S. teenagers. Some good news is that statistics show teenage drinking and driving deaths in the U.S. have dropped 35% from 1990 to 2005. But one of the greatest hazards to teens behind the wheel may be their passengers. The study finds a teen driving with one passenger doubles his or her risk of a fatal car crash. Any more passengers and the fatal crash risk is five times higher. There are an estimated nine million teenage drivers. For many, driving is a long established rite of passage. Personally for me, um, it's definitely the freedom. Transportation safety experts suggest a change in licensing laws could help save lives. 35 states currently have teenage passenger restrictions, while 15 states do not. New television ads are trying to encourage teens to combat reckless driving. With your friends endangering your life? A message some teenagers are getting. Turn the cell phone off, that really helps because it's almost impossible not to answer it. Uh, just set the iPod on shuffle. Um, the most, the hardest thing about being a driver is being completely aware of at all times, so that means you really do have to eliminate distractions. Eileen Wu, Channel One. To see if you should be behind the wheel, take the Traffic School 101 online driving test at channel1.com. But coming up, do you think you can name all these pandas? Find out how the Chinese public is getting that chance. But next, some teenagers are taking the controls and taking off. You don't want to miss this trip. Introducing Livewire, the online video channel from channel1.com. Watch web-exclusive video, behind-the-scenes action, and extended interviews over any high-speed internet connection. Click this just in to stream the newest clip. Best of, for popular stories from previous shows, hero schools to watch student work, and cool to send in and see videos you made. Livewire's Channel One, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Livewire, it's on. 60-inch screen, high definition. Football season is coming up. You can watch it right here. What do you think? I'll huh? take it. Huh? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You're right. I don't need it. Welcome back. Can you imagine getting behind the controls of an airplane before you even have your driver's license? Well, as Callie Carlin found out, that's just what some teenagers in California are doing, and it's quite a ride. Three o'clock. School's out, and for teens with nothing else to do, it's the golden hour for violent crime. 
According to the FBI, teens get in more trouble between 3 and 4 o'clock on school days than any other time of the week. And in a city like Compton, California, where violent crime is three times the national average, trouble has a tendency to find you. But these kids have found something else. This is 15-year-old Michael Sherrill. Instead of hanging out after school for the last two years, he spent his afternoons doing this. I still can't believe it to this day, like that you go somewhere at my age right now and just fly around for fun. Michael is a member of the Aero Squad, a program at Tomorrow's Aeronautical Museum in Compton that teaches pilots from 8 to 18 how to fly. I'll just keep it like that. Okay, straighten it. Just keep it like that. Lessons aren't cheap, even on a flight simulator. And once in the air, lessons can soar into the tens of thousands of dollars. But currency at this museum isn't cash. These teens pay in hard work, and that has made Michael rich. I'm just racking up a lot of hours so I could go fly. He comes here immediately after school every day to work on the old cranky computers used to teach students how to fly. But instead of a paycheck, he earns time to take off. And for Michael, the experience still doesn't seem real. Sometimes I still wonder about why, why they let us go up in those planes, but it doesn't matter to me. I'm just thankful that I can. I decided to take a chance and fly with him. I have to admit, I was a little nervous stepping inside the small helicopter with a 15-year-old at the controls. So I can't believe you're 15 years old and you're gonna fly me. I've never had a teenage pilot. After a pre-flight safety check, I stepped in. Thank you. The rotor started spinning and the helicopter lifted off. Up and above Compton. I quickly got over the fact that Michael had only flown this particular chopper a few times and that at 15, he's the same age as my little brother. He flew like a pro and aced the hardest part of all, landing. Thank you. Thanks for keeping me safe. <laughs> Very nice work. The young pilots on this airfield are experts. Four hold world records, like 17-year-old Kenny Roy. At 14, he became the youngest African-American to be legally licensed to fly a plane solo. Despite the accomplishment, Kenny remains grounded. Is it hard to imagine or believe that you're a world record setter? It's kind of, but I'm kind of used to it now. I took a spin with Kenny, too. I trust you. You're a world record holder. By nature, the Cessna was much smoother soaring than the chopper. Not to mention, this was a sunset tour of the greater Los Angeles area, all the way to the Pacific Ocean. As a passenger, I was in awe, and Kenny says he gets the same lift every time he takes off. Just cool every time. Every time I go up, I try to find something new. It's a feeling Kenny hopes to carry with him for a lifetime. Like Michael and many of the other young pilots, the program has provided Kenny with more than an after-school activity. With the program, it gave me a career that I could pursue, being a pilot. Callie Carlin, Channel One News. Go to our website to watch a live wire video interview with the Aero Squad pilots and see how a video game obsession helped them. To learn pilots lingo yourself, play the new flight simulator game on channel1.com. After the break, we'll show you the incredible shot which earned play of the week and we'll explain how with the help of the internet, these pandas will soon be getting some new names. The news that shapes your world. According to a new survey by the Carnegie Knight Task Force, 90% of teachers say news in the classroom is one of the best ways to get students interested in a class and its subject. Thank you for watching Channel One. Go to channel1.com to see the survey and share your thoughts. Every day was so wonderful and suddenly it's hard to breathe. Would it be okay if I sat here? Is she serious? Whatever. New girl. We 
reaching out. Pass it on. So don't you bring me a message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Gatorade presents the Play of the Week. Now to this week's Play of the Week. It comes to us from Gibson City Melvin Sibley High School in Illinois, where the Falcons were taking on the El Paso Gridley Titans on the basketball court. It's the fourth quarter. The El Paso Titans get a quick score to tie the game with one and a half seconds to go. While most teams would settle for overtime, Falcons senior Jonathan Tucker grabs the inbound pass and launches a prayer from his own free throw line. And when you know it, it goes in. With that 75-foot shot, the Falcons won the game by three points, and senior Jonathan Tucker became a local celebrity. Congratulations to the Falcons for making Channel One's Play of the Week. Congratulations. A Gatorade cooler and a case of powder mix are on the way. We want your best plays. Send tapes to Channel One Sports, 4455 Connecticut Avenue Northwest, Suite Number 225, Washington, D.C., 20008. And whoever sends in the winning play will also receive some great stuff from Gatorade. And there's one more story we wanted to bring to you today. Anyone who's ever had to name a pet knows how tough it can be. In China, they're trying to come up with 18 new names. So they've asked for some help. The Chinese public is playing the name game this week. The China Conservation and Research Center for the Giant Panda is holding a contest to name the center's 18, yes, 18, new pandas. The center says naming the cubs is a traditional process. It marks an important time in the pandas' lives because they're ready to leave their mothers and enter what the research center has come to call their kindergarten. The pandas, 12 females and 6 males, range in age from 5 to 7 months old. The public is encouraged to submit their ideas for names on the internet, where photos and profiles of each cub are posted. That's all for this week's shows, but there's more online. See a $200 potato, exploding meteors, and imploding buildings on Livewire at channel1.com. Look for stuff you missed. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend. We'll be back here on Monday. See you then. We all live in a yellow submarine.